what I'm going to do today is go through mods. Um, I already have multiple episodes uploaded to my YouTube channel, and I have mentioned the mods, I was, I've been coming across them, but I think it would be a good idea to just give a little recap. Uh, I don't mind searching through some mods, but I'm also very hesitant to add new mods after I've started a new game. I feel like it's always been the easiest, smoothest, bug-free, corrupt, save-free experience if you just kind of make a new save, play your mods, don't change anything, just leave it as it is. Alright, let's jump onto here. And in terms of mods and the load order, of course, no matter if it's Skyrim, something like this, the unofficial patches are always welcome. We make sure we download some of those. Um, some of these I'll highlight have definitely increased immersion, details, and more. Uh, True Storms. Just before stream today, I loaded into a little bit of Fallout 4 and uh, just basically went from the Starlight Drive-In to Sanctuary. And along the way, there was two different storms that passed. Uh, very heavy rainstorm and then eventually when I was in sanctuary a dust storm I think the variety something like that adds an immersion the sound being reworked and a lot of that really makes you feel like there's actual weather effects as opposed to something that just kind of passes and it's almost like you can brush it off the dust storm you can't brush off the dust storm you can't see so many yards in front of you so keep it in the back of your mind that if I have a storm pop up in the middle of exploring a city it's gonna reduce visibility probably only for me something tells me the enemies are gonna still see me they'll just lock direct eyes with me uh, besides the frameworks and a couple things like that um, I did focus on again not only trying to add immersion but add things to the game that made sense and things that over time could uh, help build up a story, help build a background for my character, allow me to some degree uh, role play that you know this character is building up this settlement, really is focused on trying to help the Minutemen and other people uh, in the Commonwealth. I think one of the mods that'll help me do that is Sim Settlements, because once I place a few of the residential plots down as people move into the settlement that's going to help me out a lot because it'll look over time uh, realistic it'll look immersive it's not going to be me just adding a whole city overnight over time they'll actually build it themselves which i really like uh, in terms of adding other things to the game the big game uh, hunter or hunting mod has added a good amount of creatures. It says more than 30 new lore-friendly creatures. When I'm going through these mods too, one of the big things I try to, you know, sit there and think about is, will it break the immersion? Will it add to the immersion? And <laughs> from the first episode of me dying to, uh, what is it, the Rattler Snake? Something like that? All the way to me fighting um, the rad raccoons, the beavers, and other creatures that I think were a good addition to the game. A lot of these things, again, what else makes sense? What would you find in the Commonwealth or something like that? Uh, we've added a few different things. Uh, the only real overhaul mod I have is the faction housing one. I would say if you want to know a little bit more about that, uh, I'm probably not going to be able to explain it all that well, so just check it out. But it definitely adds a, a few different things. Uh, new rooms, Minutemen stuff, Railroad, and more. Uh, Subway Runner, apparently this mod connects multiple uh, subway tunnels together. So instead of you going through a tunnel and then leaving to the top side, then going around the block or two to jump back in, supposedly this connects them. It says connects 90% of the standard subway stations. Have no idea. Have yet to test it out. Very interested to see what that looks like. Um, and then apparently they added some little save points along the way 
to make it kind of survival friendly, but not overly helpful. Uh, between Bean Town interiors and Stumble Upon interiors, there's plenty of locations that have been reopened. By that I mean, as soon as you even go into Lexington or Concord, there's buildings that were normally boarded up. Mods like these will allow you to find even more locations to explore. I'm happy with that. Uh, we're going to break the immersion for a second, and we do have the Cheater's Den. I also have the, I forget which mod it is, that allows me to have the Cheat Hollow Tape. Um, both of those are more related to the interactive portion of these episodes, and when I'm on stream and people are interacting, depending on what it is, what they're redeeming, the Cheater's Den or the Cheat Hollow Tape will allow me to do what I need to do. Uh, crowded Commonwealth, and there's a few things that I've added to make sure that in addition to even the big game Hunter mod, the Commonwealth feels much more lively. So with a couple of these, not only adding the locations, uh, interiors, but adding some exteriors as well, and filling up the wildlife and wilderness. There's a few of these, I would say if you want to know more about, definitely jump into, but just to highlight different mods that I wanted to add needed to make sense. Even my approach in these playthroughs, I'm not going to give Dogmeat a set of power armor to hold, because that wouldn't make any sense, even if Dogmeat somehow has the carrying capacity for that. Adding something like a backpack, and then giving Dogmeat the ability to carry some light things but not, you know, treat dog meat as a full mule is something I would consider. We had a conversation with the community saying if dog meat's going to pick something up, it would be bones, maybe cloth, things that, you know, you might catch a dog either playing with or biting on or something small that they can actually carry. And then if you add the backpack, that makes it even that much better, a lightweight harness thing. Uh, and then speaking of the backpack and then the harness turning into something useful for the dog. Armor for the, you know, dog meat. Dog meat's getting shot out there. Dog meat does a great job of surviving and taking a bunch of bullets. So I thought that would make sense. Speaking of dog meat again, I wanted to keep dog meat throughout the game. I love that dog meat's one of the first companions you get in the game, but then being forced to choose do you want Codsworth? Do you want. You know, uh, Piper, Nick Valentine, or anybody else who, like, I like the addition of the dog. Man's best friend over here, you know, kind of gets to hang out and uh, be a part of the adventures. Although it's been a little buggy because sometimes dog meat gets downed randomly in the middle of just walking through the, the roads. And uh, it's been, I don't know if I would say interfering with how the companion system probably should work. But I'll see how that goes over time. Let's see. Yeah, there's a few things here too. I wanted to add more life, more side kind of things to appreciate. <coughs> Excuse me, adding more NPCs, dialogue, things of that nature. Uh, quite literally adding items to place in the camps. Here's a few things. Uh, in terms of things that might actually change how the NPCs in the, let's say the game kind of works, <coughs> having more uh, caps from the merchants is pretty good. It's not something that's too crazy over the top, just having a little bit more for the merchants, especially the way I'm playing this, uh, works better. There's a couple of mods that I've also added, like this strong body uh, perk. I have to check it out, but apparently uh, it helps you carry more stuff. It's more geared towards a survival playthrough, again, but not breaking it or going over the top. There's a few things here. I have Vivid Weathers turned off because I have True Storms on. 
the gun sounds are overhauled, so they will sound different from the vanilla version of all the weapons. Okay, so we also have a few things to enhance the graphics. Some of the HD reworks, the blood textures, the clean waters, clean roads, healthier commonwealth have definitely added a sense of vibrance and a little bit more clarity, I would say, to the game. And there's a few others, just quick names that you'll read that I have here just to add a little bit more to the game. Add some more armors, add some more weapons, and then some of these are also apparel, let's say mods that I'm utilizing for my character's own look. You got a Chi Terminal like I mentioned, I have that to help me utilize some of the interactions I have with the community. And then a few things also to split up how survival works. So splitting up sleeping or saving. The fast travel thing, you can't fast travel in survival, but there are ways for me to utilize like hollow tapes or chems and things that I can make. Uh, one of the things I will be focusing on too at some point, now that I more or less know how to use it, uh, the journal, I like to make a journal, be like, okay, day one this happened, day two this happened, and try to tell some sort of story based off of previous episodes. And there's a few more here. Adding more camp-related things or world things sprinkled throughout. I want to mention the cars and trucks are lootable. I really like this. There's a lot of pros to it. There's one big con. One of the big cons for this particular mod it basically turns a car into a container and then the car will no longer explode I'm pretty sure but if that car was chosen to turn into a a, um, a lootable object if it wasn't converted then it would still be a, I guess able to explode in terms of utilizing this it adds little things here and there that make sense that you might find in a car searching through it so those additional resources do make sense and they're not over the top. Again, sim settlements related things. Other things related to working on camps, settlements, and more. But that's pretty much all the mods that I have. I think it's around 69, 70 mods that I currently have installed. And so far, they, these have treated me well. I've had a lot of these suggested to me from the community so anybody from the twitch community that has posted anything in our gilded or something along those lines thank you um, there are plenty of suggestions people have tossed my way next playthrough down the road um, there's gonna be probably more mods that impact the way survival works maybe making it even dare I say more difficult <laughs> than I'm already having an issue with or t uh, you know hard time with but again, I've enjoyed this playthrough so far and all these mods, for me, have worked pretty well. And I hope as we play through the survival experience, and as we notice which of these mods are being utilized, I hope that other people that are checking out Fallout 4 use some of these as well, and let me know what you think.